Hi, I'm Gavin, and welcome to the Coffee Conspiracies. Today we're in Oxford. Yes, that Oxford. And we're going to be looking at a series of businesses over the next few episodes that could offer a potential for you. This week we're going to look at office space. Next episode we'll look at retail, and then we'll look at light, light industrial. My objective in this series is to demonstrate the process by which you can assess a business uh, to see whether or not it's viable for you, as well as to try and give you um, some insight into the thinking that I have when I try and figure out what a business uh, needs to do to be viable at all. So let's go and have a look at, uh, at, at the map. Um, and if we look at the software we're working with, uh, it's going to be Pakaya, and that'll be the software that we use throughout this series. This is uh, the ring road around Oxford, and you can see here where all the businesses are clustered. So each of these little uh, blobs is basically where you'll find a bunch of businesses. So it's like, you know, 946. Obviously, most of the businesses are in the center of Oxford. Um, something that is important to consider when we uh, look at some of the valuations and assessments is that Oxford City Council has not to date published the vacancy data that we use to try and do estimates. Um, and that does have an effect. For the moment, though, we're looking at uh, a property out here in West Oxford. Um, from an access perspective, the ring road is the A34. It's the main highway. Uh, and this is the only real road into West Oxford and into the city. This is the railway line. So the office space is over here. Um, you're about 20, 25 minutes walk from the railway line and another 10, 15 minutes from there into the center of town. Uh, in terms of uh, types of services and facilities you might expect to find around here, you're going to see um, a very small number of shops. Uh, and there's grocery stores and, and, and some fairly uh, modest restaurants. Um, better eating obviously is in town, so you're probably going to find you're going to bring a packed lunch most days. And this is the property we're looking at, Hanborough House. Um, it's going for about £75,000 a year for 300 square meters. So this is not a small office. Um, but something that is important in terms of uh, understanding uh, an office space is if you are running an office, the likelihood is you have already started by working at home. For most professional businesses, which is office space, um, there is no reason not to be able to start from a small home office. And once you've gotten to the point where you need to actually hire staff and bring people together, the likelihood is you already have the revenue to be able to support reasonable office. Um, we'll look into this in a little bit uh, more detail, but let's first have a look around the premises. So these are, this is basically the, uh, the entrance to this office block. And the, uh, the building is relatively modern. Uh, big windows, lots of light, and it's in a it's off uh, the main road into Oxford, so it's a quiet side street. It means you're not really going to get into trouble there. There are still some housing nearby, and the parking space is relatively empty because there appear to be quite a few empties in this building. Most of the offices though are quite large. Um, there may be some potential to subdivide. So maybe you can uh, chat to the landlord and see if there's an opportunity to reduce uh, some of the uh, the size. As you can see here on the, uh, this is the main road uh, coming into Oxford, so it is quite busy. Uh, there's a McDonald's there, which is currently being refurbished, which is the height of fine dining in this area. And um, obviously you can, uh, during rush hour, this area is going to be fairly packed. But there is also uh, good public transport links and uh, reasonable accommodation. If we look at what we know about Oxford, um, you can see that it's got quite a mix of different types of uh, businesses and industries here. Obviously, it's a university town. Uh, there is a great deal of uh, spin-outs from the university. There's a lot of uh, leisure use, a lot of accommodation available, um, a lot of retail, a lot of restaurants. What we know about this particular property is what's on this uh, page over here. You can see the, um, that for a size of office space, uh, you're looking at 20 to 25 people. 
that you'd be hoping to uh, house in your office there. You'll note that the rental valuation as seen here, um, this is the very latest 2017 rental valuation used to assess tax rates paid on that property. It's only 40,000 and yet the rental offer for here is, is 75. So there's a huge difference already, um, even this early in the year on a, on a valuation that hasn't even gone live yet. It only goes live in April. Um, and what this does mean is, is that the break even for this particular office will be higher than we've assessed. Now, for 20 to 25 people, um, we're assessing a break even of about 3.3 million a year. This depends on our, whether you're going to be able to do anything with this depends on what sort of business you're in. I mean, if you're in a small IT consulting firm um, and you're doing, say, 100 to 150,000 pounds for a relatively medium sized project, what you'd be looking at there um, is maybe 20 to, to 30 projects a year to hit break even. Um, if you're uh, in the fortunate position of doing more complex consulting and you're able to charge say a million um, obviously three major projects but clearly this is you know a relatively uh, medium-sized company rather than small um, and as I said the interesting thing about this I mean, we're saying here that we estimate revenue at 5.7 million to understand where that number comes from we basically look at all the businesses in an area and we look at the uh, the gross value add um, which the National Statistics Department releases as being produced in a particular area that's the value businesses produce in this area already so businesses in Oxford are actually quite uh, doing quite well and the market is therefore there it just depends on whether or not you as a business are able to to hit those targets obviously in our case we might have underestimated staff costs. Um, we've certainly underestimated some of the rent. So if you set yourself for a 300 square meter uh, property, a target of about 4 million for break even, you there can gauge in terms of the project size that you're already working on, whether or not you could actually afford this, this space, to take this on and commit to a five year lease. Now, I've just shown you a property that's 300 square meters in size, 75,000 pounds in rental a year, and maybe requiring 20 to 25 staff, a million pounds in salaries. You might be thinking that's a pretty big business with which to kick off your series. And you're right, it is. It's a medium sized company. A company that does four to six million pounds in revenue per year is definitely not a tiny startup company. But this is important for a sense of scale. These are really nice office spaces and you might get a hold of an estate agent, have a look around and decide that you want to buy or rent something which is well beyond your capacity to sustain. And that can get you into trouble. If you're not doing uh, 20 to 30, 150,000 pound projects a year, then these sorts of office sizes are not going to be sustainable. Have a look at what it is that you can actually do. What sort of size is your business? If your business is a half a million pound size business, a four-person business. Um, do you even need an office? Is it possible to work remotely? So hopefully this has been interesting to you. Uh, for next week uh, episode we'll look at uh, retail also in Oxford and I look forward to seeing you again next time. Thanks and enjoy your coffee. <laughs>